Hello, my name is uh, Bram Lagru. I'm the Managing Director of Lagru Partners and I would like to talk to you now if you're an accountant or working as a manager in an accounting practice. Welcome to this program. What we've noticed is that there's uh, quite a few challenges that certain uh, accounting practices are uh, facing and we would like to come with a few ideas that could help you to also grow your practices more quickly and more profitably over the next months to come. What we will do is first go through a few challenges, five of them, then to go through research findings based on the extensive work we've done with accounting practices over the last few years, and then we'll come to the uh, conclusions where three key strategic uh, solutions will be put forward and discussed with you for your consideration. Again, let's just get started with the five challenges first. Number one. What we've noticed is that, again, every time when we've uh, conducted surveys and questionnaires and when we interviewed uh, accountants, uh, is that uh, when we asked, where do you feel at times that it is more, a bit more challenging on you or where do you find that it's difficult in dealing with your clients? And then it would typically come back with something as, that sounds as the following. We noticed that it is hard to justify why our fees are what they are. And as a result of this, we sometimes lose our clients to lower tier accounting firms uh, as a result. Somehow we cannot convey or the client doesn't understand why the, the prices we charge for, or the fees we ask for the work we do are justified. So this is the first major challenge. The second one is, uh, again, years of the last few years, there has been a steady sort of uh, movement and trend to... Uh, you know, try in, in an attempt to grow is to buy other practices and merge them together. Now the challenge with that is multiple. Obviously first, even though everything may look well on paper and the numbers stack up, the challenge is that then suddenly you have two different co company cultures trying to be, to work together. Certain people are fearful about what their job will look like, how routines will work, how, uh, be changed how the workflow will be changed, how new systems they will need to work with. Excel spreadsheets may have been used before, now the, the new company asks them to do it quite differently. So quite a few different, different ways in approaches and procedures and all sorts of things that allow people to become more resistant towards the new managers, the new partners. And then somehow you start seeing that different, that they're becoming, that silos start to form uh, amongst the, the staff that obviously are hampering productivity and that ultimately then leads to a loss of productivity and profitability. Sometimes really good people decide to pack up their bags and go to work for the competitors. And obviously these are not the things that we like typically to occur. So how can we grow organically, more quickly and more profitably so that the risks involved in, with mergers and acquisitions can be seriously reduced and we can still be very profitable and grow our practices and our teams. This is the major challenge that most practices again are experiencing that right now, especially those who have already gone through the pain points over merger and acquisition. One of the things that also came out of our interviews is that accountants, um, they noticed that when they do the analysis of the client portfolio they have, is that there's a pool of clients uh, that you know, they just somehow came their way. Sometimes they inherited them with another practice they, they merged with. They're part of the client books they bought. Uh, sometimes it's just they've taken on the work, even though the, the work is not very profitable. Uh, the clients are very hard to deal with. Uh, they have high expectations. Uh, there's more work sometimes involved that you cannot, cannot bill or charge for, and so on. So how can we somehow recruit more ideal clients instead so that we have larger fees that we can charge for the, for the time that we invest and our teams. And um, obviously, again, that we have a more enjoyable experience, but also a more um, economical one at the same time. So recruiting more ideal clients, how can we do so? Point four, networking for profit. How do we do it? Whenever you go, in, whenever you go in, uh, to networking functions or corporate events, a lot of accountants go there. The challenge that typically happens is that these people tend to go to the people they already know, the clients they know, their colleagues they know, sometimes their friends, which means that even though you go to networking with the idea to uh, get to know new people and change business cards, 
so that you can then uh, hopefully recruit a few, few new clients. That typically doesn't happen uh, amongst accountants. There tends to be more like a, um, a search for being steady and for the, thing, the people they know rather than to break out and look for the new people so that you can grow your clients' books more quickly. Because uh, people are more technically trained in the accounting profession, obviously there's a lot of compliance, there's a lot of legalities uh, partly involved as well. So there's a lot of focus on product and technical knowledge, but there's not really much uh, in terms involved of how to lead people. How can you once in a while, if you, when you step out of the operations of the work and as a partner, you go out to do more business development and marketing, to uh, you know, grow the practice. How can you then also uh, lead the teams that you manage? How can you then uh, direct people, delegate, uh, motivate people and coach them to get more out of them to help the, 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 the practice grow again and uh, communicate more effectively? All of this is underpinned by leading or leadership skills. Let's now discuss research findings. Number one, there's six of, uh, in total and we'll tackle number one first. Number one, across the board we've noticed that accounting firms haven't got a business development system. It means you can have all your systems and procedures in place to do the compliance work, but there is no specific business development or marketing system that partners and manage up and coming talent use in order to attract and, uh, to attract and grow business organically. Number two, uh, because accountants are excellent and really thoroughly trained and educated in technical matters, the challenge is that somehow the, uh, or the gap is really that uh, there hasn't been really much in terms of helping accountants and managers to go out and, and win the work first. So the opportunity is really is to complement the technical skills which obviously you have uh, training and development days for and specific credits uh, to stay accredited uh, to complement these with specific non-accounting, non-technical related business development skills in order to help to win the work so that you can build more for time and obviously assist more clients and companies out there. So billable hours, you can only charge for them when you have first won and secured the work. So how do we do that? Again, this is a key strategic initiative that you can look at on how to do it. Research finding number three. There is four different communication and negotiation profiles typically. So if you look at behaviors, how do people communicate? How do people think? And then also try to influence other people to win them over for a point, for a project, for certain services and so on. Well, what we've noticed is that again, from the four different styles, the accountants typically fit in into two of those styles, which means that two of them are left untapped. Now, what is the implication of this in, in terms of business development? It does mean that your firm right now is not servicing potentially a market that could be some of your best ideal clients. The clients that typically would be described as follows, fast paced, big picture, either results or people oriented, uh, but highly results and, and very high on energy, very quick in their thinking, standing up in their feet, quite intuitive, don't need much, much facts and details and typically like to delegate that to somebody else. But they're also the type of people that haven't got much time available. Well, time poor entrepreneurs, executives, uh, serial business, uh, business uh, uh, people and so on, these would be the type of people that if you feel there is a market for them, my, the prediction is that you can actually um, recruit may, way more people like them and um, you know, help, your, help them with your services, both in the compliance as well as the advisory services, just by simply empowering your partners and managers to relate differently to these people. So it's really about how to read people and then be able to match your behavior to their behavior so that these clients feel more comfortable in your presence, you develop more trust, you develop more rapport, and as a result of that, you end up doing business. Next, number four, by just having a, a different approach, we mentioned earlier that uh, sometimes justifying the fees is a hard thing to do. Well, by adopting a different approach, 
that again focuses more on how do we need to bring our message rather than what does the message need to include in terms of content. By you focusing on the two rather than one only, what you will see is that you actually uh, will have people finding it way more valuable as an exercise that they go through with you. Uh, the experience is more enjoyable for, from a client's perspective so that they are more satisfied and more happy to pay for your fees. And by, by default, your practice reduces the risk involved of losing clients to low tier accounting practices out there. Number five, we've noticed that also there is a genuine desire for accountants to improve their communication skills. Obviously, as your practice wants to grow, you will organize different events, you will invite people over, sometimes you will be a sponsor of a corporate event uh, to increase your visibility and again get in front of the right type of people that you would like to serve as more. Improving your communication skills, whether you speak to a camera or a large audience or just in small groups of people, again, you can only, we've noticed that the best people are really good in conveying a message and to capturing an audience, to create psychological buy-in, emotional buy-in. And this is something that typically doesn't fit in the curriculum from a technical accounting type of um, qualification. So by helping your people, your partners specifically, and your raising stars, uh, the managers that are upcoming and, and uh, junior staff, to help them with these type of things is a great investment. Our last, again, back on research, um, we can measure business development skills. So anything from prospecting all the way till securing the work and everything in between. What we've noticed is that across our research uh, that we've conducted, through all the assessments we've done, is that accountants tend to be very good at uh, qualifying, which is doing the thorough needs analysis, uh, asking the right questions, uh, getting the right facts and details on paper, taking notes of those. That is really a, a key skill that typically comes with in-depth understanding and uh, knowledge and expertise. So it is really a very good skill to have. The second one then is to present. Once the analysis are, is done and the findings are put together with certain recommendations, to bring that again in terms of presenting it both face to face as well as on paper, that's an, again a skill that clients excel at, or sorry, accountants excel at. However, it means that there's also a huge opportunity for the accounting firms to um, develop the, fir the, four diff uh, the four remaining skills as well. So by helping partners, managers and junior staff again to increase these other four or improve those other four skills, that will seriously help to increase your bottom line profit within a very short period of time as well. So what are three solutions? Things that you can do in order to help you to uh, grow your books and also your profit in the next foreseeable future? Well, there are three things that I would like to share with you. Number one, it is to do a very thorough business development audit. Now obviously we don't infringe here on the work that you typically do, but the business development audit helps you to get a snapshot from the entire experience that a client will, will go through in, uh, before they do business with you. So from the front desk and the lady who picks up the phone to assist them, all the way through to the, the partners um, doing the needs analysis, presenting uh, a few solutions to them and then to win the work, secure the work on paper. Everything can be measured. Everything can be measured from uh, non-accountants, people who are non-experts in your field and who look at the experience of a client rather than what, a, well, let's say you as an accountant would see yourself. So by outsourcing this type of work, you will actually have somebody looking at a business development uh, audit system and then put everything in place uh, that allows you to highlight the strengths, but also the, ex the things that, that uh, need some improvement in order to create the experience needed to win more clients over. So that's the business development audit. Number two, once you have that audit, then you have some really thorough and in-depth uh, insight into what the potential looks like or how you can improve your business and continuously improve it so that more people come your way. Then obviously the real work starts. Then it's about putting the strategies together. So it's about consulting then with a business development expert on how to create a system 
a company-wide system that can be used in the telemarketing department, in the uh, event organizing department, in, uh, through, uh, well, across all partners and their staff, so that the business development system is geared towards cross-selling, on-selling, um, using diff uh, like expanding all your suites of pro uh, programs and services to your existing clients so that you do more work with your clients and you also leverage their networks, you tap into their uh, best clients as well so that again you grow organically, externally but in a highly strategic way. How would that system look like? That is something you can come up with with again a business development expert. Now we go now to number three. Once you've got the strategy, the methodologies in place, then obviously it's about making sure that people take it, uh, take it on and execute it. So having a good thorough training, mentoring and coaching program in place that rewards the right behaviors, that allows the key performance indicators to uh, grow will typically always depend on the extent that you are able to help people feel comfortable about doing things differently, to making changes that are required in order to make the, the company grow, to help people differentiate your brand, your company, so that the right people want to do more business with you. Having that trust factor instilled will only happen to the point that your staff are fully engaged the partners become role models and the partners become confident in their ability to become not just a good expert and a good operations person but also a very good business development professional that helps more businesses and clients out there. So these are the three solutions that you can help your own firm with to grow within the next 3 to 12 months organically and highly profitably as well. My name is Bram, it was a pleasure talking to you today. I look forward to being of assistance to you and please for any questions you just pick up the phone and dial in to our office and we'll be assisting you from there. All things will be held confidential as well. Again it was a pleasure and I wish you a great day. Bye bye.